guys, it's Ariel here from Fix My Books and today I am going to go over things you should be reviewing in your QuickBooks online account for your year end or basically this will apply to any accounting software but just make sure that this is the review that you have to do before giving your financials to your accountant or tax preparer. So just a quick disclaimer, you should only be doing this review if all your accounts have been reconciled for the year already. So if your accounts are not reconciled, make sure that you get your bookkeeping caught up to date and then reconcile your accounts. And then once that's done, you can proceed with these steps. Okay, so now that that disclaimer is out of the way, let's get started. So first things first, we're going to check our profit and loss. So we're going to go over here to reports, profit and loss, and then we're just going to do this year. I already messed with the profit and loss so that it's not perfect and that you guys see what I'm talking about. So just go before looking at any of the amounts, just go through each line item, make sure that it all looks correct to you. And even the amounts after that. So make sure that, that it kind of matches what you think you paid. So, okay, so insurance expense, 2250 That's around, you know, ballpark figure of what I paid. That seems correct. Move on to the next one. Interest expense, okay, that looks kind of okay. You know, move on to the next one. That's what I mean by just check the amounts. As a business owner, you know, you have some idea how much you paid for things, you know, how how much your insurance expense should be. So this is just like a quick check to see do these amounts in my profit and loss kind of match what I was thinking in the first place. So just do like a quick once over to get that out of the way. Next is anything that is a negative expense like this janitorial expense. I said I did tell you guys I did mess with it so that you can see what I mean. So anything like this, a negative expense, meaning it's it's being considered as income, that's weird. You should definitely check that out. So I'm going to click on this. As you can see, these expenses are correct. And then there's a weird expense here, which I obviously made to, to make the balances look weird. So that's obviously my fault, but that's what I mean. Just double check everything that is in that janitorial expense category to make sure that you know nothing's being weird this is definitely wrong so you're like okay this is not like a real expense or something you can just delete it like that and then get out of there and then you see okay so now the janitorial expense looks correct right it's not negative anymore so next is go through your sales anything that is a negative sale which is, you know, something like this or this that is not a refund should be reviewed. So refunds and allowances, negative 10,000. That's fine. Refunds and allowances should be negative. Okay, because it is um, a refund. But if your sales, your actual sales account like this is negative, then there's definitely something wrong that you need to review. So again, I messed with it over here to just produce the negative sale. So just do things like that and make sure that nothing looks really weird. So again, refunds and allowances, it's okay that it's negative. But if it's your actual sale account, it's not okay. This has to be reviewed. Okay, so next we're going to move on to the balance sheet. Okay, let's change this to this year. Okay, so anything in the balance sheet that looks weird, meaning an asset in credit or liabilities and equity in debit. So an asset in credit is the checking account. So you can see it's a neg it's negative. So why is it is it really in negative? Meaning like are you, did you overdraw your checking account if if you overdrew your checking account, then this is correct. But if you know that your checking account is not overdrawn, then there's an issue that is producing this. So that's just one thing. So accumulated depreciation, don't freak out about this. This is supposed to be negative. It's a contra asset against your property, plant, and equipment. That's normal. So 
that is not a negative asset. It is a contra asset. That's something else. A negative, an asset like with a credit balance, right? So I mean negative asset like this. That's weird. But if you see accumulated depreciation and it's negative, that's normal. Don't freak out about that. So another thing that you should be looking for is your liabilities and equity and debit, meaning something like this. Accounts payable should not be negative. So if it's negative like this, it means something wrong happened. Either you overpaid the bill, you did not record the payment properly. So I did mess with this. I did make this myself. So you can see here that I did overpay a bill. So to produce that. So just make sure that you don't have any negative or um, sorry, liabilities in debit. And this is that what that will look like in your balance sheet. Next after that is that you should be checking your accounts receivable and accounts payable. So let's go to the accounts receivable first. So the reason why we are reviewing the accounts receivable is so that anything, any open invoices that you don't think are going to be paid can be booked by your bookkeeper or your tax preparer or accountant as bad debts. So let's just go put it here, receivable, aging detail. The reason why we want it detailed is we want to see exactly which invoices are still open. So you can double check here and then you can say, oh, I don't think this, you know, this invoice from um, 1010 is going to be collected. So just take note of that. Tell your bookkeeper or accountant. They will know what to do with that. So just review it and make sure that all the invoices that are here have not actually been paid. So if you see an open invoice over here and you know for sure that invoice has been paid, it means that the payment was not recorded properly and you need to go back and double check what happened with that payment. Why wasn't it recorded? Was that payment accidentally applied to someone else's invoice? So an invoice for the same amount, but it's actually like a different person. So just double check your accounts receivable aging detail. Once that's done, we're going to check our accounts payable aging detail. So the thing with the accounts payable, we're double checking this so that we are sure that expenses aren't double entered, meaning if it's an expense, it was only entered once because most likely, let's say you think, oh, I already paid this supplier, Christina. Why is the bill still open in here? Well, that means either the payment was recorded for a different supplier or the expense was double entered. So just make sure that the payment is recorded correctly and that this bill was not entered twice because then you're, you know, claiming the expense twice, right? That's what's going to happen if you don't double check your accounts payables. So that's a quick review of that and i'm trying to go through this very quickly so that the video isn't too long next we're going to check our hsd return so we need to check that the hsd payable in our balance sheet and our hsd return matches so meaning one will check the balance sheet and then the other we're going to check the hsd return okay so in the hsd return it's saying that we have supposedly a refund of $1,323.23. So now it's time to check the balance sheet. Make sure also that it's the correct dates. So if you don't click, if I don't click this um, full full year, what it might not match. So make sure that if we are looking at the full year this year, that the HSD return also says full year, meaning January to December 31. So it's obviously not going to match because this is a dummy account. But make sure that if you're doing that in your, your account, it will match in terms of the dates. So we can see here that 1323.23 in the balance sheet is also 1323.23. They're both refunds. So that's perfect, that matches, that's fine. That's all I mean by making sure the amounts match. If they don't, 
if these two amounts don't match, then that's another issue that you're going to have to review and make sure those match before submitting your financials to the accountant or your accountant will fix this issue for you. Okay, so if now you know that this is a refund, right? You need to go ahead and double check your input tax credits. So the way that you could do that is go to reports, GSD, sorry, GSD, HSD, detail report. Match it for the year, so this whole year. And then look for the largest amounts in terms of your ITCs. Look for the largest amounts over here. And then make sure that whatever the largest amounts are, so like this $487.50, you have a copy of that invoice just in case the CRA has any questions. You don't really need to do this at the moment. It's an extra step, but like I like to do this for my clients and I would prefer that you do this as well. So just in case the CRA does review your HSD return, you are not scrambling, you already have the invoices on hand. So just double check before you do anything or, or forward your financial statements to your accountant. So I'm telling you guys this because I want to make sure that when you give your financials to your accountant, it might not be perfect, but all the red flags that are like blatantly wrong have already been resolved, right? You guys are not bookkeepers. You may not know how to fix it, but just this is a little step that you can do to lower your accounting fees. The more correct you get your QuickBooks online account, right? Then the less time your accountant or tax preparer will spend on your file. And so you're going to pay less, right? So if you have capital assets that you claim capital cost allowance slash depreciation on, then you must review your capital assets account for any new purchases made in the year. So just make sure that in your balance sheet, when you double check it, you look at this and you're like, hey, I had 2750 as my balance last year. I'm pretty sure I bought another, you know, thousand or two thousand dollars worth of equipment this year. Why isn't it here? Where did it go? So that's something you have to find out. Make sure that if you did make any purchases, it is reflected in your balance sheet. So don't mess with the depreciation. You probably... 100% most people would not know how to do this. So that's why I mean, just double check that the balance is correct, that you it wasn't put as a shareholder loan or something else. So that's what I mean. Just double check your um, capital purchases for the year are recorded correctly. So next, after your capital assets, we are going to look at inventory. So what I mean by looking at inventory, you don't have to be super detailed, but most business owners would have an idea of what their ending inventory would be, right? So for example, your starting inventory is 5000 You purchased an additional, right, 7500 worth of inventory. And then you went around your warehouse as of December 31st, 2022, and you're like, okay, I only have $3,000 of inventory left. So it means your cost of goods sold is $9,500. So if you know that your ending inventory is only $3,000, but your ending inventory is showing as something else, then right off the bat, you know that your inventory asset is overstated because you know that in your warehouse, your inventory is only $3,000. So this needs to be adjusted. Take note. Let your bookkeeper or your accountant know that this is not the correct inventory and it needs to be adjusted to this ending inventory amount of 3000 I don't want to tell you guys, okay, adjust it yourselves because I, you guys are not professional bookkeepers or accountants, so I'm not going to get into that. I'm just saying this is what you need to review. These are the things you need to take note of that you need to tell your bookkeeper or tax preparer or accountant about these things at the end of the year. 
So if you found this video helpful, please don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this video. And don't forget to hit the notification bell so you always get notified whenever I upload new videos to my YouTube channel. And once again, this is Ariel from Fix My Books, helping you fix your books.